as well stand. Yes. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. To the world, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ. While fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat, repeat the sounding joy. Oh, come let us 
shepherds, why this jubilee? Why your joyous reigns prolong? What the gladsome tidings be, which inspire your heavenly song? Oh 
We all want Christmas to be big. We want Christmas to be big. We want it to be bright. We want it to be bold. We want Christmas to be big. My little boy Ezra, he made himself an advent calendar out of a piece of printer paper and some markers. And he wrote out 1 through 25. And each day he's been marking that off, and he gets really excited about that. And the number 25 is the biggest number on the whole page. We want Christmas to be big. We go all out for Christmas. In fact, if commercials are any truth, people actually buy their loved ones new trucks (laughs) and cars for Christmas. Just a hint, right? I don't know who these people are, but we want Christmas to be so big. We go all out. We pull out all the stops, buy up all the presents, eat up all the sweets. We have a big old family meal. We have all these traditions. We have a big Christmas celebration at the church, and we have kids on the stage, and we do all sorts of things at this time of year. We want Christmas to be big. But you know, that very first Christmas didn't feel so big. That very first Christmas actually seemed pretty small. There wasn't a lot of fanfare. There wasn't a big splash about anything. Sure, there was a star in the sky, but that only drew the attention of some Gentiles out east. Sure, there was a choir of angels, but they just came to lowly shepherds. It was actually kind of a small thing. A lot of people didn't know about it at all. Herod only got wind of it because some of these travelers from the east came by, but It's a relatively small thing. Think of the key characters from this for a moment. Think of Mary, just a young girl. She's betrothed. It was a big thing to her. But aside from that, who was Mary before this moment? Just a a young woman. Then there's Joseph. He's just uh, just a regular old guy. He's a carpenter works with his hands. And then think about the setting for a moment. 
Think about this humble setting for the story. It doesn't seem very big. When a royal out in England has a baby, that's a big thing, isn't it? There's even music, right? <laughs> they have trumpets. The whole world watches. It's glorious. But this story, it's not so big. There's no room. And they place the baby in a humble manger. And it's a small affair. The God of the universe taking on flesh in such a humble, small way. I want you to be thinking about that as we hear the Christmas story once again. It's a story we've heard dozens, hundreds, maybe even thousands of times. But it's a story that we need to hear again and again. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. The story begins with new life. The goodness of God's creation but it wouldn't take long for the disobedience of humanity to bring about a terrible darkness. A darkness so black and hideous. A darkness so cold and evil that it brought death and destruction. Thankfully, God's love cannot be overshadowed by darkness. The Christmas story is a story of great anticipation. Waiting for God to heal our broken world. A longing for God's light to pierce the darkness and bring wholeness and restoration once again. A longing for these ancient words to come true. For the time is coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous descendant from King David's line. He will be a king who rules with wisdom. He will do what is just and right throughout the land. And this will be his name. The Lord is our righteousness. In that day, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. Thankfully, when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, subject to the law. God sent him to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law so that he could adopt us as his very own children. This is how the birth of God's son, the light of the world, came about. God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, but how could this happen? I am a virgin. The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but she has conceived a son and is now in her sixth month. For the word of God will never fail. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. A few days later, Mary hurried to the hill country of Judea, to the town where Zechariah lived. She entered the house and greeted Elizabeth. At the sound of Mary's greeting, Elizabeth's child leaped within her. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. 
Elizabeth gave a glad cry and exclaimed to Mary, God has blessed you above all women and your child is blessed. Why am I so honored that the mother of my Lord should visit me? When I heard your greeting, the baby in my womb jumped for joy. You are blessed because you believe that the Lord would do what he said. Meanwhile, the news of this pregnancy was met with questions and doubts. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her publicly. So he decided to break the engagement quietly. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through the prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until the child would be born. At that time, the Roman emperor, Augustus, decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman world. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for this census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged and was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. That night, there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified. But the angel reassured them, don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph. And there was the baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. But Mary kept all of these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from the eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem, asking, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of the religious law and asked, Where is this Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah. For a ruler will come from you, who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. Then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the star first appeared. 
he told them, go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me so that I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went their way, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. When it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by another route, for God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. After the wise men were gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, flee to Egypt with the child and his mother, the angel said. Stay there until I tell you to return, because Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. That night, Joseph left for Egypt with the child and Mary, his mother, and they stayed there until Herod's death. This fulfilled what the Lord had spoken through the prophet. I called my son out of Egypt. Herod was furious when he realized that the wise men had outwitted him. He sent soldiers to kill all the boys in and around Bethlehem who were two years old and under, based on the wise men's report of the star's first appearance. The child's birth was surrounded by great darkness. But thankfully, the one who is the true light, who gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He came into the very world he created, but the world did not recognize him. He came to his own people, and even they rejected him. But to all who believed in him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. They are reborn, not with physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. So the Word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness, and we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. Later, when Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. Get up, the angel said, take the child and his mother back to the land of Israel, because those who were trying to kill the child are dead. So Joseph got up and returned to the land of Israel with Jesus and his mother. But when he learned that the new ruler of Judea was Herod's son Archelaus, he was afraid to go there. Then after being warned in a dream, he left for the region of Galilee. So the family went and lived in a town called Nazareth. This fulfilled what the prophet had said, he will be called a Nazarene. Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and all the people. Jesus went into Galilee where he preached God's good news. The time promised by God has come at last, he announced. The kingdom of God is near. Repent of your sins and believe the good news. Jesus gave sight to the blind, healed the lame, raised the dead, and taught the crowds. He brought light into the world. Jesus also did many other things. If they were all written down, I suppose the whole world could not contain the books that would be written. It would be impossible to say everything there is to say about this great, great story. But perhaps Jesus can sum it up like this. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. You know, there really is nothing bigger than the birth of Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, gracious God, we, like those shepherds, are astonished, amazed, transformed by your grace and mercy. 
Lord, it's a story we've heard many times. But I pray that it's a story that lives in our hearts each and every day. About how even though we were still sinners, how we were wretched and broken and lost in our own darkness, that you sent your one and only Son, not with great fanfare, not with big, big things, but to be born and humbly placed in a manger. The biggest, the biggest thing in the entire universe, the creator of all things, placed in a small, tiny manger. Lord, thank you for the hope of Christmas and all that we come to rejoice in this season. And it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Go ahead and stand, please. probably going to be something big, but tonight we have this opportunity to share in a meal that physically is small, yet represents something enormous. In just a moment, as the ushers dismiss you row by row to come forward, to take up the bread and the cup 
stack together. We invite every believer to share in the Lord's Supper together, to take up that piece of bread and remember the broken body of Jesus, to take up that cup which reminds us of his shed blood, to remind us of the big, big love of our Savior. Let's thank him for that right now. Lord God, you are good and gracious. Thank you for these simple, tangible items that remind us of your big, big love. We pray all of this in Christ's name. Amen. In the book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 13, the Apostle Paul told the church in Rome, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. At this time, we're going to sing one more song, Silent Night. And we have an opportunity to fill this place with light. It's a reminder of God's love that outshines the darkness. A reminder that God's hope fills this place with joy and his lasting peace. A light that reminds us that we have abundant life in the name of Jesus. As we sing, it is our prayer that you would consider the message and hope that we all share as believers. We do invite you to light your candle carefully. If your candle is already lit, keep it upright and let us um, prepare with these words of prayer. Good and gracious God, thank you for the light that outshines the darkness and for the peace and hope and joy that we have because of that first silent night. In Christ's name I pray. Amen.
Christmas Church. Go in the grace and peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ.